That's a lot of years. It's literally twice D'Angelo's age. Uh, so D'Angelo, we have a lot of questions from people that uh, from all ranges of basketball, some off the court stuff, and you know the drill because you did this last year. First of all, how was practice today? We appreciate you taking the time. Oh, it was competitive. Um, we got after it, so it was fun. Practice, all right, good. Let's start with King Rod 202 D'Angelo, and the question is, what team did you grow up rooting for? You're from Louisville, of course. Yeah, um, we didn't have any pro teams there, so I didn't, I didn't really, I wasn't a diehard fan of any team specifically. Um, I just was a, really a fan of players. So. Yeah, that, how, I wonder how that, how that does work. So you watch, you know, so when you're growing up in the 90s, basically, so, you know, Kobe, is there with the Lakers, but did you get the previous generation of players too, like on tape or looking at old games, whether it was Jordan or Magic or Bird, or did you kind of start with the... I watched a lot of Iverson, Iverson and Jordan. You know, um, my, my coach was a basketball junkie, my AAU coach growing up, and he, he had a lot of tapes just laid around his house. So when we were like, on, on road trips or something, we stayed at his house before we got on the road. We were just digging his film and just watch stuff like that. So. Was buying jerseys for players a big thing at your school? No. No? Um, I think I had a few jerseys growing up, though. Um, I was never, like, going out to get them, but I, my dad would, like, surprise us with it and stuff like that. You remember your first jersey was? Um, I think it was an Iverson jersey. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. What's your – I don't know. When you're uh, in your free time, I'm not sure how much you spend – how much time you spend watching – TV shows, movies, but everybody always wants to know about that. So, do you have a do you have a current list of shows and or movies that you're watching? Yeah, um, on the plane, we, we get a lot of time to uh, watch shows and stuff like that. Um, I just finished Ray Donovan and Power. Um, Power, I, I I really enjoyed Power. That was cool. Um, Ray Donovan was nice too. So I just I've been trying to finish um, Breaking Bad, but it's it's, it's so hard. That's, that season's long. And you guys, you guys stick with it. It'll, yeah. it'll be no, worth your just, while. It's just so, it's so, so much time going into it. I Which season are you on right now? Walking Dead, uh, four. Okay. Yeah, that or Walking Dead. Um, I just finished Westworld. I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with. Yeah, that. I watched that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Westworld, yeah. Interesting ending. Yeah. Yeah. And I just started the, the Americans. So. Okay. All right. I like that show too. That's good. All right. You're you're on some good TV shows. We like yeah. this. All right. Do you like playing the point? This is from Wavy Swag, five oh seven. What do you like playing better, point guard or shooting guard, D'Angelo Ross? Um, I don't mind. You know, uh, point guard is, is a very tough position. You know, um, it's, it's 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 an opportunity to to um, make your other players around you better when you're playing the point guard. If that's attacking or if that's just passing, you know. Uh, but being the shooting guard is an easier position as far as you, you got one, one, one way that's attack, you know, um, and make plays, you know. So I don't, I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me. Definitely different roles, though. But you see, so the NBA has changed in some, to some extent, uh, along these lines, though. Because if you think about point guards in the '80s and the '90s, today some of the, the point guards are you know, Steph Curry and Damian Lillard and Russell Westbrook, who all take a lot of shots mm. and are scores. Then you have in terms of a pure point guard. I suppose uh, Ricky Rubio, in terms of one that just the, the sort of pass first, or Chris Paul kind of blends, but would still probably be a pass first guy. So when you're growing up in the game playing basketball, did you get put in one position or the other, or do you play sort of, do you just shoot a lot as a point guard? Do you pass a lot as a shooting guard? How does all that, how did all that sort of stuff out? I remember out? growing up for me, um, I was never the point guard. I always, I always played shooting guard. Just was my, my com I was more comfortable playing shooting guard, and uh, I remember my dad. He was saying he used to always send me off to other teams to play with, so I could play, be the only like ball handling guard to just dribble against pressure and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I never wanted to. I was never like. I would always give the ball to the point guard when it was time to 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 break the press and stuff like that. And my dad was like, "You can't be like that." And then um, a few coaches told him if I wanted to be a pro, I'd have to be a point guard because I wasn't. I wasn't like super tall growing up and stuff like that, so that's when I started trying to develop point guard skills. And uh, I would say my first year playing point guard was um, senior year of high school. 
It is interesting because now, now you look at the league and what coaches are doing with the point guard position, and James Harden is now playing you know, point guard, basically where he's got the ball the whole game and initiating mm-hmm. everything at screen roll. And you got Giannis Antetokounmpo, who you just saw, who is, I don't know if you would describe him as a point guard, keep having to use the air quotes because mm-hmm. these things are getting muddled. Yeah. But when, when you, do you feel like the experience that you had growing up in that has now, are you still, will you sit down with the coaches and, and think, oh, okay, well, if I'm thinking like a point guard, then I would have run screen roll this way versus if I'm thinking like a shooting guard. And how does all that happen? I would just say that the, the initiation of the offense, if, you, if you're bringing the ball up, you're starting the offense, you know? Mm-hmm. If that's the center bringing the ball up, well, the, the biggest guy on the floor, or if that's the smallest guy on the floor, there, it doesn't really matter. But if, if you're bringing the ball up, you're in the position to, to, to make the offense. And growing up, the guys that made the offense and called the offense were the point guards. But like you said, in this day and age, it's, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's more of a, a basketball player. You've got five basketball players on the court right. that can rebound and bring the ball up and run the offense. Then what happens in when you're trying to, when Luke Walton wants you to run a set or run something, right? Versus if you're coming down and you just want to call out a screen roll because you see a matchup and you, you, know, you want to try to get the ball somewhere. What's that balance like? What's that dynamic like? What, is, what are Luke and Jesse Mermies and the rest of the coaches telling you? Um, they made it easier for me as far as um, when to have screen and rolls and when to run a play. Um, the game's going by so fast, so when we're rebounding and getting stops and just pushing this automatic, this automatic ball screen, you know, it's not a, a call or whisper to the big, come to the ball screen. It's automatic. We practice it. We preach it. We watch film on it. It's automatic. So if we're slowing the game down and the pace of the game is slower, then that's where you can call plays and stuff like that. But then sometimes I get in the habit of trying to run plays instead of just coming off the ball screen, which is more effective at the time. Gotcha. All right, Fly Like Bryant would like to know, what's been the hardest part of transitioning from college ball over to the NBA. Uh, you, of course, played one year at Ohio State, yeah. averaged about 25 and 5, had some success there. What's been, and I remember asking you this question last year, so I'm curious now if having another year in the NBA under your wing, if that answer has changed at all. College is slow. Um, picking up the, the, the pace of the NBA game is, is completely different, you know, and then a lot of the guys that have, the, the experience, playing against experience is a is a key at the same time too. Playing against guys that have been in this league for a long time, that are I don't know I would say, study the game for for a while now. I mean, you come into the league just this raw talent that has no idea of study and preparation of what it takes to to be at their caliber. It's it's tough. Um, so I would just say the pace and the experience. James, well, a lot of people have asked about uh, just sort of the, your progress, and this year you've seen you know, some games even look, even. Starting in the game in Denver and going to Boston, where you're basically averaging, you know, 20 points, nine assists, seven rebounds, and, and then you have a couple of games, Detroit, and New York, uh, where your assist numbers were still there, but you weren't as aggressive. How what is how would you describe what it's like just trying to establish consistency um, and in having some really good games, and then having other games where where you're uh, where maybe some other players are have have the ball more. What is the what does the ebb and flow of your season uh, look like for you, and how do you think about it? Um, it's been a lot of um, I would say a lot of adversity set into this year as far as who you're playing with and who you're not playing with. Mm-hmm. So um, we have a lot of I, don't know, I would say weird lineups that you're not used to out there. So it's it's where you got to figure out when where you're gonna get your shots, when you're gonna attack, when you're gonna get other guys involved and stuff like that. But when you're playing with new guys, it it, it makes it harder. So um, I would say a few games. A few games, the last few games, I've been playing with different lineups. So um, I've been trying to figure out how to how to keep it going, you know, as far as being aggressive and and keeping myself involved, but playing with other guys that I haven't that I'm not as used to playing with too. All right, that that makes sense actually, because if you so in New York, that's when Ingram went into the lineup and he was playing with the second unit a little bit more like a point guard where he had the ball in his hands and he was initiating more. Mm-hmm. So then you had been doing that mostly with the starters. So if he's playing, then even just, just not that it's just you and Brandon, but you and Brandon then have to figure out, okay, who has the ball when, who's going to attack when, right? Is that is that part of what you're getting at? Yeah, but it, it's also easier, too, because both of us rebound, you know, at our position. So uh, whoever gets the rebound just 
run. Like I said, back to what I said previously, whoever gets the rebound initiates the offense. And um, I like the rebound. He likes the rebound. So we, right. we just – Go ahead. Go ahead. It, may, it just makes it easier, you know, whoever gets the rebound. Something, same thing can happen with Julius sometimes too, where if he gets the ball, then he likes to go up and initiate offense. So that's, that's the stuff that you guys are still working to figure yeah. out. All right, underage Frank, a shoe question. We always encourage shoe questions. Um, what is your favorite shoe of all time? Um, I gotta go with Jordans. Um, Jordan Fourteens. Fourteens, okay. I'd, I'd probably go Jordan Fives. You have a pair of Jordan Fives? I'm not. I, I know it. I don't. I'm not like that. Big not on shoes, it. you know. Um, I mix. I get them mixed up. But um, I'm familiar with a Jordan. What a Jordan Five looks like. I'm trying to remember what the the Jordan Four. The George, oh yeah, okay. See, I have to do that too. I know, mo- I know most of the Jordans, but this is the no, 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 no. No, <clears throat> this is a good video because if people can see what I'm. That's a out, thirteen. Like, oh, that's a thirteen. Okay, I came up with it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have some of them. Yeah, those are some of the ones. Yeah, those are my guys. All right, Jordan. Got it. <clears throat> D'Angelo, at this point, in your career, you're twenty. You got, you have some NBA experience in you, but you got a ways to go. What's the biggest thing you feel like you have to improve? It says Tibbs 9-11. I don't know if that's Tom Thibodeau. Yeah. I don't think he's on Twitter, though. <laughs> um, so much, you know. Um, you always want to sharpen up your tools that you're already considered good at. But um, I don't know. I want to I get stronger, you know. Um, being stronger at this, at this level gives you, gives you um, I don't know, it puts you over the, over the edge as far as in your position. If you're stronger than the next guy that you're competing against, it kind of gives you more leverage and a, an advantage. Um, so that's, that's really my main, my main focus. But like I said, experience plays a, a ton in this league. You know, um, first-year guys, I mean, a lot of guys get it right away, and you see, you see the future right away, and then there's some guys that mm-hmm. take a while, you know, and, and, and that's their route, but... This experience plays a lot. Yeah, we, I had a, had a like a radio topic with Michael Thompson the other day about if you look at the current All Star point guards, you know it took them usually four or five years, sometimes six to get to that point. Even Steph Curry, you know, came into the league, but it took him until until that time. Kyle Lowry was kind of a late bloomer in that sense. Mike Conley, um, you can kind of even so even Lillard came in Rookie of the Year. But Hilt still hasn't gotten to the actual All Star game. So it's 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 uh, it's actually wait last year. I called in, but it, so it's gotten, it's gotten to that point. But when you when you're on the court with these guys, how like how do you feel like you're competing even with the guys that are currently all stars? And what do you see your path to, to be in the next couple of years? I mean, it puts a stamp over their heads. You know, um, you play against those guys, you you know that they're all stars. You know, you know what they're what they're I don't know what they're capable of and, and stuff like that. But um, I would say being a young guy in the league, you've watched all these guys develop. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like that you like you missed their steps to being to where they're at now. You watched it. So you, as you were watching, you were like, when I play against them, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And then when you get out there and play against them, it might be something completely different. But then I would say as time goes on, you look back and it's, it's that simple. Just compete and, and use what you got versus what they got and may the best man win. You talked about strength. Do you mean physical strength, just upper body, lower body? Uh, because the, your skill set, that's something that you've had. With the shoot, the, like the simple things. Uh, dribble, pass, shoot. Right? Th- those seem to be, you can, you can do those things. Yeah. But what, it's just physical in terms of getting in the weight room, eating, that's the type of thing that you yeah. think you need to yeah. take. Yeah, so. um, just taking care of your body is, is the, main, the main thing as far as um, eating the proper, proper meals. Um, I don't know. That that's really the main thing right there, eating the proper meals, getting the, the proper amount of um, strength and conditioning in a, in a day or a week, and um, just really cap, I don't know, capitalizing on that. All right, and and look, if you something I talked about to Luke Walton about a couple of weeks ago was you've had the injuries have have interrupted both your progress and the team's progress. You start ten and ten right around the time that you you and Nick Young go down for a couple of weeks. Then the team starts to get going in early January, and, uh, and the knee flares up again. So how has that impacted you this season, and uh, where do you feel like you're at right now with your body, with your knee, and as to you know, what kind of issue it might be uh, in the future, and how do you keep it under control? Well, I mean, injuries aren't something you can really control. You know, um, 
and you, you try to do research on what what goes into injuries and stuff like that. But um, something you can't really control. But um, that's why that's why you got the amount of talent you have on each team, guys. It, it gives guys the opportunity to step up. But um, I mean, I feel fine now. You know, after I, I mean, I got all that out the way. I feel good. You know, going into the second half of the season, I mean, All Star break right around the corner. That's going to be a great opportunity to rest and, and recover. But um, I feel good going into the second half. Yeah, so you you felt better these last couple of weeks than where you were. Yeah, oh, that's good. All right, Mr. Bugatti Mark would like to know, D'Angelo, why are you wearing the jersey with number one on it? Are there any particular reasons how you choose your number? Honestly, this is probably the first jersey number that I I got, and I didn't have a reason behind it. Honestly. Um, Number one was, I mean, Lakers franchise has a lot of retired jerseys, you mm -hmm. know. So um, one was, I would say, one of the jerseys that I was like, cool, I'm gonna go with it. Was it one of the? Was there one of the retired ones that you uh, that you used to wear? No. Okay. But that they had they had a lot, and I was just like, I don't really, I don't know, I didn't have any favorite number or anything. So. Got you. Have you have you established a? This is from I Loading 2K. A, a favorite place to eat. So far in LA, in your couple years here. Yeah, Petro's, Manhattan Beach. Um, I go there a lot. Um, Petro's is, is his food's great, you know. So I go there a lot. Former haunt of uh, Sasha Vujicic. Actually, I think he's still there. You know, Sa you ever met Sasha? Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's the. You see him there? No. Okay. I, I heard though. I heard he goes there a okay. lot. Ray Ray Chin Chin, have you set up some time with Magic yet? And all right, so I think that I think that was Luke that said that. That magic got you on the phone, yeah. um, and so what? Uh, what? What of that can you and do you want to share? Uh, what it was like talking to Magic? Uh, it was. It wasn't. I, I feel like people were confusing it with him. Just I don't know. Just sp spreading knowledge with me right away. I feel like it was more of a um, like opening a door. Like I'm. I'm here. See you soon. Can't wait to work with you. Type of thing. Not. When you come off the pick and roll, you should look at this and do that. Mm -hmm. It worked for me. This is what you should do. It wasn't. It wasn't anything like that. So um, uh, I think time will tell. Uh, you know um, how good that will be. Yeah, that's. So how do you? That's that's interesting because you think about it with Magic and even as Luke said, he had yet to have the chance to really talk to Magic to figure out what his role is going to be. Yeah. But when since he opened that pipeline. You know, how much do you try to take advantage of it versus thinking, you know, that you don't want to uh, take his time? And I remember Kobe having having these things when he was a, he was a rookie, saying, "Look, I don't I don't care. If, once the, if the guy tells me that he'll he'll help me, he's calling, he's texting, like trying to find the knowledge all the time." So that is there a balance there? And, and how do you think about trying to use? Because it's not just magic. A lot of the different resources that the Lakers have, like there are a lot James of, Worthy and stuff that come yeah, around. Yeah, there are a lot of resources here, but it, at the same time, you gotta, I feel like f from my perspective, you, you, you're, like I said, experience is really the key. I don't, I don't know what to ask, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, I don't have a question to ask, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's more like when I go out there and play, I, I, I get my own answer, you know? If I, if I did it this way, I watch film, I see next time I should do it that way. It's not that I, that he could tell me, or somebody specifically could tell me, um, do it that way, do it this way. You know, they can give me a different avenue on it, but I don't know how to ask them. Like, hey, you should. What would you do if you were doing this? Like, because I find the answer myself. You know, so I would say experience is really the main, the main thing that that gets a lot of guys over the hump. That that has questions, especially to these guys that 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 have the knowledge and the credibility to answer them. So you basically you trust your your own experience and what you're and what you're playing the most and you yeah and you I mean I definitely that. you I mean you definitely have a lot to learn don't get me wrong yeah. it's just like me being two years in I don't really know what to ask you know what I'm saying I feel like as far as me being a few more years in and I have I, I, my questions would be more direct but I don't have any specific questions to those guys you know? question from. Nader, 25, what do you think the Lakers need to become a championship or a playoff team, D'Angelo? That's a tricky question. Um, I don't, I think with the talent that we have, we're capable. Um, I just think we need to, you know, spend more time together as far as playing, practice time and playing time and just, just time will come, you know. I don't think it's anything specifically right now that we need. After practice about a, about an hour ago, I was talking to one of the assistant coaches, and 
the, about the the power of continuity in the NBA. And if you look at the teams, they're at the top of the standings for the most part. Every once in a while, there's an exception. These are all teams that have been together and grown together. Yeah. The coach has been there. They have the same system. What what about being on a team like this with new coaching staff with new young players? How does how do you see that actually play out in a in a challenge? And why does it make it tougher to win on certain nights? It's something you got to stick with. You can't really get uh, you can't get bored or tired of the process of of winning. You know, um, you're trying to get there. You're trying to be one of those top teams in the league. We're not there yet, but we're trying to. So um, it's something that when we have a bad night or or something like that, we can't go pointing fingers and, and being young and immature about it. It's something we got to just stick with, you know. Um, and then when we play well, we can't get too high on ourselves. Like, all right, we're there. This is what it is. Because then we can come out the next game and, and, and not show up, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's something that you got to stick with. Stick with the same routine going in, in and out of each game. Um, taking every practice uh, time serious and, and stuff like that. D'Angelo Russell is joining us again as the Lakers and Toyota suit up together, as they have for 40 years. And D'Angelo, this, this, there's a question here from DoveDub187 that, that dovetails into something I want to ask you about also. Uh, but first, what individual goals do you have for yourself uh, in your career, if you, if you think about it in that context? Um, individual goals is, is that's a very broad question. Um, yeah, it could mean, you know, that do, you, do you want to think about all-star games or just titles or no. just, you know, uh, numbers? Or, I mean, or, I, know. Would say, I would say titles is, is something that you can really pride yourself into as far as being part of it, you know, being on a team that, that rebuilds and goes through the process of trying to figure it out, winning. I mean, you, you go through losing and stuff like that, and then you figure out winning. I feel like that's the beauty of it, figuring out how to do it, and then coming in and just doing it every chance you get, and then... Titles and stuff are at at, um, at at your reach, you know. So um, that's definitely my, um, my 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 individual goal as far as reaching that opportunity to get a title. It's consistent. I mean, I ask you a lot of questions after every game. That and usually you you do steer it towards that uh, team aspect of it. So I, I haven't heard you actually mention that type of a individual pursuit. But that's why. So the a narrative, and I don't know if it's fan or media driven or whatever, player driven, coach driven, is okay. Does there need to be the one star that emerges out of this group? You know, is, uh, is it going to be is D'Angelo, Julius, Brandon? Who, who's going to be the guy that we think we can build around? Do you, uh, from a player standpoint, do thoughts like that come up? Uh, do, you, do you think about how people can evolve and who your, if your teammate's going to be this or that? How, how, do you, how do you generally approach a question like that and if it matters? I, I, don't, I don't really, um, I, don't think, I don't think you need it, you know. Um, I hope everybody in the locker room feels like they're the guy. You know, um, obviously you got role players and, and guys that do this and do that, but whatever you're put in the position, whatever coach puts you in a position to do, be the best at it. So I feel like if you, if he's putting you in a position to go get the rebound, be be the guy. You're the guy to go get that rebound. If you're put in a position to take the last shot, be the guy. Come up, step to the plate, and, and make it happen. So I don't I don't feel like we're um, any other guys, younger guys, or guys that you just mentioned, are in the in the position to say, "Oh, yeah, I'm this guy. I'm I'm mm -hmm. going to be the face. I'm the this that." When you should just, I don't know, we should come together as a team and, and, and try to figure it out. And whatever happens, happens. Don't don't go chase that, you know, because then I feel like the the main goal will be, I don't know, you you will you lose focus of what the main goal is. Trying to focus on that individual goal. How have the, the coaches focused you for this year as to what like what they want from you and how to how to how do you reach that? I think they did a great they've done a great job. You know, um, some nights I take advantage of it, some nights I don't. But I, I think they've done a great job of putting me in a position to make the best play, putting guys around me in a position to to capitalize off me making the right play, and um, they're, they're doing a heck of a job. And then, what to follow up on that? What would the? How would you describe what that position is that they want you to be in? I mean, the ball's in your hands, so you you got to make a lot of plays. You know, um, like you said, balancing out when to when to uh, score and when to get guys going. But the the offense is is like I said, it's second nature of when to when to run a ball screen and when not because we practice it every day. 
um, transition and stuff like that. So they, they just made it easier for me in that, that aspect. D'Angelo Russell, a couple more questions with you before we get you out of here. I think you, okay, last year I think you answered this question saying that maybe baseball, uh, but what would you be doing for a living if you weren't in the NBA? Did you say baseball last year? I don't remember. Yeah. Um, I would say baseball because. Um, you get some nods in the back that you said baseball. Yeah, it's a lot of money in the baseball. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd probably do baseball. From the home of the Louisville Slugger and all that. Yeah. Right? You grew, grew up playing baseball. Uh, what position would you have been? Pitcher. You play, okay, you pitcher. I, I Six did five a, lefty. Yeah, that'd be that'd be nice. You know, you probably got a little curveball in there too. You got some like, That was that was false advertisement. If I got another chance to do that, I think I, I think I'd let it rip a little bit. You know. So. Okay. Got you. Do you have a favorite album right now? A D D S Gurn. Favorite album. Mm, favorite album. Mm mm. Oh, I mean, I, I think I'm, gonna, I'm setting myself up for disappointment here, but remember how I asked it, that you listened to the Chocolate yeah, Quest album? I never got on it. That's what, I hate, I don't, I'm not really a fan of, <laughs> no, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings here. You better be careful if you're going to come <laughs> a Tribe real, right now. <laughs> no, I, I ain't saying nothing about Tribe. I, I, don't know, I don't know who that is. I heard of it, but I've never listened to it, so I'm not going to criticize it. I haven't you know, gave it an opportunity, but... Painful, I don't go painful. back and listen to music. That, that's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't. I'm, I don't really go back and listen to music that wasn't in my time. That's what I'm saying. Do you not think you can learn things from the past and/or be entertained by things from the past? I'm gonna sound like the old guy. <laughs> no, I definitely think you can, but yeah. I don't. You just ha it just hasn't come up yet. It just doesn't interest me, honestly. So keep keep moving it in my, my way. <laughs> My wave. You, look, you got to do what's best for you. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to say that it's, this is some good stuff. Now, this album, though, came out this year. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Like, you don't have to go back and listen to all the old Tribe stuff. I'd just I be know. curious what you thought of it. I'm not saying you have to like it. Just be curious. No, you, say, you said it came out this year, and I didn't know. But I'm being pushy anyway, so what's your, what's your answer? What do you listen to now? Uh, I'm a Travis Scott Uzi fan. Um, they've been holding the music a little bit. Um, Bryson Tiller, too, you know. Um, but they haven't. They they've been featuring on a lot of songs. I like when they put their own music out. Um, and I mean, I, I'm a J Cole fan too. But he kind of went a different route with things. Is that new album is pretty good. Yeah, he kind of went a different route with things. I'm not Actually, saying it's bad. Our, but our camera got Paul's uh, dog is named J Cole. Who? You Paul's, have a, Paul's dog. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? You have dogs or just yeah? yeah one dog? Big, two. Two dogs. Yeah. yeah. What are their names? Uh, Max and Molly. And uh, Great Dane. No, I no. have Bernice Mountain Dogs. Oh, Bernice mixed, Mountain Dogs. They're called Bernadoodles. They're mixed with poodles. Okay, how big are they? Not big. Um, I don't know. Probably like that. Not okay, not that. How many pounds? Uh, one's, one's probably like 30, 30, 35. Okay, not that big. Yeah, and the other one's a little bigger. But. I swear there were, there were photos or something of you with the Great Dane. No. Yeah, I got, rid of, I got rid of my Great Dane. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry to hear about that. Sad story. Okay. Sorry to hear about that. All right. Uh, what do we got time for? One, two more? Two more. All right. Ooh, no, all right. This is a good question. What's your all-time NBA starting five? Now, uh, well, we've just established with your, you don't like to go back, you know, like, so I, I'm a little, you I'm can't just start with like AI and now. Kobe and, you know. I'm not going to say anybody that's playing now, though. Oh, so I'll, no, then say all, reti all retired players, if you want. All retired players. All right. Um, Point guard, Magic. Sure. <laughs> you, I'm trying to protect you. Yeah. I mean, you keep Magic, can't go Kobe, Steve Nash when he was a Laker, uh, James no. Worthy, and <laughs> and freaking uh, Kareem. That's it. That's my team. <laughs> if we okay, if I give you a non-Laker caveat, then so that I don't know any you. players that aren't Lakers. Okay, good. All right, got it. <laughs> I wasn't trying to say you had to pick all Lakers. No, I just don't. It won't register. Gotcha. I don't know any good. players like that. Gotcha. Good, good, good. All right, finally. Oh, okay, this is, okay, this is a good question. Uh, two, two questions on this from Turb13 and then Victor6. Because I, I think Luke, for the first time, kind of talked about your pregame routine and you yeah. told us about it in practice. Because the questions were, do you have any pregame rituals? Last year at this time, you, you had yet to have a routine. So right. what was the routine? Or I guess what is it? And how do you like it? How do you think it's been helping so far? Um, it, when when you say pregame, it's not just pregame. It's every day. Yeah, know, the whole, every, yeah, the whole yeah, time. Yeah, so it's more like, um, I mean, 
get shots up after practice. That was pretty much uh, something I already did. But um, the certain shots that I got and the certain certain shots that I was taking, um, I would watch film, like the same, like specific film on who I was playing against. Um, I mean, I'm still doing it, you know. Um, I would get the same weight routine in. Um, I would eat a meal at this time, take a nap at that time, wake up, eat at this time, um, leave my house to head to the game at this time to give me enough time to to um, to prepare, you know, for the game. Yep. Um, specific stretches, specific. Um, rehab before the game, stuff like that, just to get mentally prepared and physically prepared for the game. It was just the same process, same routine going into every game, and it, and it played out well for me. Folks, it's D'Angelo Russell. Uh, thanks so much for your time. D'Angelo, I know you got a, you want to get home. You had a tough practice, so yeah. appreciate you hanging out with us, man. Um, we'll be back next month with another player. Uh, again, Lakers and Toyota partnering up together for 40 years. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah.